Okay, so the next thing that we'll grab, let's go ahead and turn that print off. We know we're looping the way we want to loop. And let's say that data frame underscore side equals the data frame, and this is the smaller data frame, the DF that we've pulled out of here, equals DF dot loc. And here we'll pull out the pitch DF substand. And if you remember, that's the that's the batter's that's the side that the batter's standing on. And we're saying if it equals side name. Okay. So again, whichever one we've grabbed, we want to pull off that slice of data as well. And now for our first graph here, we'll say ax equals df underscore side dot plot, and the kind will be scatter. And the parameters we'll need to give it. Uh, obviously, you've got to always specify your x, and that's going to be the px. And we're plotting that against pz. And our marker equals mark, and again, that's the one we pulled out of our dictionary. Our color equals, and you see why I spelled that c-o-l-r rather than say color equals color. And our fig size equals, and let's do an 8 by 8. Since we're making four, we'll tighten them up a bit. And then, as we've done before, let's set our Y limit to 0, 4. And we'll set our X limb equals minus 2, comma, minus 2. There's comma 2. Okay, and that needs to be a list. Okay, so I think we've pulled the right data out. We've pulled the points out at this at this point. And so now what we need to do, so, so our points are going to go on, but they're going to go on an empty graph. So we've drawn the scatter points. And what I want to do is I want to say if side name equal r. What I want to do is I want to draw text on the graph. And again, remember that this is the catcher's point of view. So I want to put an R. I'm going to put an R in a square on the left side of our graph to represent the right-handed batter and on the right side for the left-hander. So now I'll confess that I've scouted out these coordinates. So what I'm going to say is if we're on the right, if, if we're processing the right-handers, and I'm going to use a minus 1.6, and that's my X chord. So that's where I'm going to start the text, and I've played around with it a little bit. And then handers equals, and that's going to be my verbose text, right handers. And if that's not the case, we know it's a left hander, so we'll just copy and paste this. Drag it down there. And in that case, we're over on the right side of the graph, so it's not negative anymore. This is going to be about 1.4. And again, because it's the lower left corner of the text box, they're not exactly symmetrical because the left hand will be scooted over a little bit more. So with that, let's say the TXT batter equals, again, axis 1 dot, in this case, text. And the arguments are the X chord, so it's the lower left-hand corner. And in both cases, they'll be 2.5 up on the graph. So they're up about midway in the strike zone. And then side name. And then the style. And again, all these are settable, settable parameters. There's many more. We'll just set a couple of them. We're going to set it to italic. We're going to set the font size equal to 24. And the color 
as we said before to COLR. So we're going to draw in the same color as the as the dots for that particular graph. Okay, so there's our text. And now at this point, what we want to do is same thing we did before, we want to draw the strike zone. That's pretty straightforward, and we've done it above, so I won't have you suffer through me typing out all this. I just grabbed it and we'll cut and paste it. And again, you remember we've got the plate, we've got everything in feet, so we've normalized everything to feet. We've got the strike zone top from the actual data frame, we've got the strike zone bottom, and then we've added, we've padded around the formal strike zone to create the light blue and then the dark blue for the strike zone. So at that point, now let, we will need to do one other thing, and that's to make sure we've got the outer rectangle dot z order set to a deeper z order. And, and again, z order is the kind of the overlay. And if you were stacking these on a on a table, then we want to bring the rectangle, which is our formal strike zone, we want to bring its Z order to a layer above that. So we've got minus two. These are arbitrary. We set minus two for the outer strike zone, minus one for the inner strike zone. And before I forget, let's uh, let's set some labels. We've got, we've got AX1, so our axis, and we'll set our X label to pitch call. And again, remember that's the two loops that we're in. We've got pitch call, and then I'm going to say plus S to. And remember, we created this hander, so we got the right and left handers. So my handers title is in the handers variable. And we'll say in parentheses catchers view. All right, so that'll be our X label, our Y label. I'm just going to remind folks that this is the We got X, Y. So our Y label is the vertical location. Okay, so there's our X and Y label. Uh, one other thing I want to do is we talked about this before setting the aspect ratio to aspect equal 1. All right, so at that point, all we should need to do is say plt dot y limit. So we'll set up our limits like we did before between zero and five. Could have copied that as well, but we're right here. X limit is minus. We're going to go a little larger on this since there's a whole lot of pitches in there. So we'll set it from two and a half to two and a half. Okay, so we've got a five by five square. Let's see if that creates our plots. And there we go. Okay, so if you remember, we, we said we're going to loop through the through the strikes, called strikes, and there they are, to the right-handers. And then we should have called strikes to the left-handers. And now we've got balls. Now, I'm sure Clayton Kershaw was not happy about these. So these were called balls. And we got he painted the corner right there. He's clearly in the strike zone on these and painted the corner right there. So these were called balls to right handers, and these were called balls to left handers. So it looks like he's got he's he's got good calls from the umpires on the left handers. And got a couple bad calls on the right handers. And then here's his strikes. Pretty accurate on his strikes. In fact he got a couple gifts there. He got those inside pitches to the right-hander called the strikes as well. So overall, uh, one, of the, one of the things you'll see as you go through this data is the umpires are really good. 
you know, they, there was just an article about the uh, for the first time they're using track men data to call balls and strikes in the minor leagues. And the biggest issue they've got so far, while it's very accurate, it's calling higher strikes, number one. But number two, there's a time delay. So you're not getting an instant. Uh, the umpire's literally got an iPhone in his pocket, and he's getting this signal from the track man that's telling him what to call. So anyway, that's that's our first real graph. That's our first graph where we've gone through, we've looped through the right and left handers and the called strikes and balls, and we're actually charting pitch positions relative to the strike zone. And we're getting the strike zone top and bottom from the actual batter. 